here. She's got a little rundown for us from Howard 100 News. Come on in, Lisa, and say hi to everyone. Lisa, she Lisa. takes shits at work. Ever since uh, she got her new bra, she's dressing more provocatively. I just want to point that out to my radio audience. This is a new top? Takes new top, showing more cleavage. Showing uh, it's a new me. Showing your new assets. <laughs> Good for you. What do you got for us? All right, the woman whose 40th birthday party Sal almost single-handedly destroyed is speaking out to Howard 100 News. Right. At Laura's party, Sal exposed his penis, ruined her birthday poster, and insulted her sister-in-law. He drew cum on her face. <laughs> she says, quote, it was very unexplainable behavior. Who thinks of this stuff? He's a 40-year-old man in an 8-year-old body. Believe it or not, I was actually curious to see what was in his pouch. I had never seen an uncircumcised <laughs> penis before and it was pretty scary. What was in his pouch? Nothing, but she just wanted to see it. A small cock. Because he claims when he was drunk he was playing what's in my pouch in the back of a car. Right, I don't know what he put in this time. All I know is I was talking to Ralph yesterday and and he said I called um, Sal after uh, the show and said, the next time you go to a party, can I go? I really want to see some of these (laughs) things. Yeah, it'd be fun to watch. It'd be fun to watch a guy self-destruct, yeah. I, uh, I, I put coins in it. Oh, Coins really? in your pouch? Yeah. Has your wife spoken to... Like, how was your whole vacation? I mean, was it just horrible? I don't know. It is what it is, man. It's like being in traffic. You know, you just got to deal with it. Wow. That's nice. How was... Um, has she said anything to you about your behavior at this party? Well, I went back to uh, Laura's house last night and uh, to apologize <laughs> and follow up. See, she, she was... She's actually... Because she's such a big fan of you, of yours... Um, she was delighted that at least her birthday is being recognized. So I went over there, and she was happy about that. She wasn't pleased what I did to the party. But your segment came on the radio, and uh, Christine listened to it. And uh, when you said to me, you know what, dude, you don't take your dick out at a party in front of your wife. You, You can't expect her to actually like you and love you for that. And I think subconsciously, my wife just started saying yes to herself. I noticed her doing that. Right. And she never expresses that stuff to me. But you almost acted as her therapist yesterday. And I, I saw a different side of her. So. I made her realize mm. what uh, she felt about you. No, you made Sally realize. You made realize. me realize, yeah. Made she, you realize. She, she didn't she get won't, Yeah, she won't address these things to me for some reason. Why? <laughs> I guess she gave up. Mm. You know, I either, when 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 she wasn't angry. But do you notice a pattern that like everything you do is you ends up at like like huge apologies, mm-hmm. sending people flowers and uh, look at this. This is days yeah. after the party. He's still dealing with the repercussions. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Day by day. <laughs> day by day. Day by day. day, by day. No, but do you ever do you ever get embarrassed? Like just sort of how you're. Dude, I'm beyond embarrassment. I mean, I've, I've <laughs> sold my soul to the devil. What are you right. talking well, about? I, what, what, I can't even... It's beyond embarrassment. I mean, what do you mean you sold your soul to I the mean, devil? I mean, I have no dignity left. You know, I mean, what do I have? But, but if you want dignity, why would you, like, start drawing cum stains on, on the woman's picture and then <laughs> whipping your cock out and, like, leaving it hanging out and, you know, pissing into the fucking... Yeah, doesn't it sound like you gave away your dignity? Yeah. Nobody took it I mean, from you. you Did he ever have you it? Say, <laughs> you, when you say you made a deal with the devil, again, it implies to me that no, you're so starved for attention... That you've decided to just throw away all of your dignity just to get this attention. I guess I, I don't know. I mean, I don't like to look at myself that way, but... Um, what do you mean you made a deal with the devil? What did you mean I don't by mean, that? I mean, I mean, uh, no, you know, you said something. What do you mean by it? Yeah. I don't know. I just I decided to cross through that threshold of humility and uh, just do whatever I do. The threshold of humility. Yeah, yeah you know, I broke through that. But what's the deal with the devil? What is the devil giving you in return? In other words... Yeah. When you make a deal with the devil, it sounds to me like you got like the Like when Robert Johnson deal. gave his soul to the devil, supposedly he, he gained the stone. ability to become a, an incredible blues player. <laughs> what did you what did become? You get? What did you get? Captain Sack. No, what did you want? What, what Would you say you made a deal with the devil? What is the it's deal? It's not really a deal with the, You know, I, I, prop, I, uh, I think I improperly uh, put that phrase together. I, I, I don't know. It's like the... No, I think you, you meant what you said. You made a deal of, with the devil. Okay. In my head, it's the wages of doing what you do. Uh, for entertainment, I mean. So am I the devil? Like, in other words, no, you're uh, the greatest thing that ever happened to me. But I it mean, sounds like I'm the devil. In other words, you made a deal with the devil. In order to get on the Howard Stern show, you had to be crazy. In my head, yes. Yeah, not, so I'm the devil. No, you're not the devil. You're the guy that I. I but isn't like. that devilish? Like, I, like you made a deal with me to come on this show, and, and in order to be on the show, you have to be wild and crazy. No, I 
think I think you are the symbol. And now of, you're famous. I think you're the symbol of the greatest achievement in my life, working for somebody who is the greatest entertainer ever, and being a part of that is really gratifying. So what's the deal with mm. the devil? The deal with the devil in my own head is yes. In my own head, I feel like I had to do these crazy, insane things to please. But even at a party. What? You have to please me even, even when you're at, at, a, at a private party. No, I don't think that's the case. I don't know what I did at a party, Howard. I, I just think I have some issues. But, but, that... No, you whipped out your cock. You drew cum stains on a woman's you put face. put coins in it? You put coins in your cock. But Like, you weren't even on the show. I get it if you're on the show. You're right. trying to be funny. Were you doing it for me at the party? Hoping you'd hear about it? No, actually, I didn't even want to dis discuss it at the uh, on the show yesterday. I told Richard about it, and I knew yeah, that. Yeah, that's my point. So, so why why are you doing it at a party? I, that has nothing to do with making a deal with the devil. I know. I don't. I don't know, Howard. There's a lot of things that I uh, I question myself about. But it is, you know, it is what it is. What can I do? I'm, I'm trying the best that I can. Uh, I, I, I love when Sal explains himself yeah, because it's so it, great. It sounds crazy. I don't yeah. Know, what's it, I, what, but you were kind of bragging about it on Lotus Nuts when you sent me that picture of your ass. I when you, it was funny. When I, you mooned, your yeah. wife was kissing the birthday boy, and then you just pulled your pants down and showed your asshole. No <laughs> chick digs that. I mean, your wife, I mean, you're trying to patch your marriage up together. Like, Lisa, would you, could you be married to a guy who always is the guy who moons and whips his cock out at parties? I'll be, I'll be honest. No. No. But his friend Laura loves Sal. Yeah, but yeah, but his wife doesn't. Right. And, yeah, and like Laura Beth said to me, if she was married, I was me. telling Beth about it. She goes, I, she goes, I don't know if I could be married to a guy. She goes, who just like whips his cock out and is always drawing cums. He's always the guy who does that. You know, I'm not always the guy that does that, but I, I did have a, have a lot to drink that night, so. You know, I never thought I'd say this sentence, but Sal, you're not making any sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> Must be all that jet skiing already, all that weight you're losing from those jet skis. It's, like, it's causing you to... Keep run. it up, you wow. bastard. Keep, up your memory. keep pushing that jet ski button, pal. <laughs> you keep pushing it. You're looking great. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you're not Sal, seeing Lisa's 30 Ds. Sal, I don't want to... Nobody is already looking at her. Sal, I don't want to ruin your on-air persona, but I know you're a big Eunice Shriver fan. She died 29 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah was that a Kennedy broad or something? Yeah, she was... Wasn't uh, that a Kennedy broad? She was a Kennedy sister. A lovely remembrance. I like to draw cum stains on a corpse. See, yeah. everybody's fucked up. Look at Kennedy Howard. He was shagging Marilyn Monroe behind everybody's back. Everybody's got their own little things. I'm the only idiot that brings this to the forefront. That's the only difference. But he was showing his dick at the right time. The yeah. forefront. To Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> I would, no one would fault you for doing that. Yeah, that, that was actually a normal yeah. thing. He was yeah. coming on his secretaries. That was okay. And Marilyn Monroe. Well, Sal. Uh... I, look, I love my wife dearly, and I, I, want, I, I question it every day. I say, you know, is she quiet because she's just indifferent to me and I'm providing for the family? Or does she see a different side of me and really love me? Yeah, that's... but you're not providing for the family, though. That's a yeah, really... I am. What do you love about her? Everything. I think she's a great mom. She's a great person. She put up with a lot of my bullshit. And when's um... the last time you had sex with her? Did you have sex with her the entire week off? No. Not at all. When did the party happen? At the beginning yeah. of the vacation? Yeah, the party happened on the beginning of the vacation. And then uh, at the end of the vacation uh, on the Saturday night, I said, come on, now it's time for you to have fun. <laughs> I put it on her. Uh, that's when she said, get lost. And that, <laughs> that said a lot because here we are getting along, or at least I thought so. And then all of a sudden, get lost to me sounds like a lot of pent up anger and frustration. You well, think? Yeah, yeah. I that's mean, right. How, how would you feel? And I know this could never happen, but how would you feel out of all of a sudden Beth turns to you in bed and says, Sal, Get it lost. wasn't all but of Sal, a sudden. That's a heavy Sal, statement. Sal, you're retarded. No, I'm not. You sound retarded. You go into a party with your wife. You whip out your asshole. You whip out your cock. You play Guess What's in My Pouch in front of your wife. You draw cum stains on the birthday girl's picture. You, you do all this a stuff. Woman. So then she's so fuming mad that you don't even pick up the signals. The reason she's not, you think she's not talking to you because she, she didn't care about any of that stuff. She's not right. talking to you because she thinks you're a fucking retard. And then on Saturday night, you ask her for sex and she says, get lost. And you thought you were getting along with her all week. Get lost is getting all the easy in that, in that situation. Yeah, I don't know. I, that's 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 what I need to work on. That's why I'm going to therapy. I yeah, but the point is you miss every <laughs> signal. Uh, you know, what can, some you hit, some you miss. What can I tell you? <laughs> You don't care. No, I do. I do. I so I dearly care. I just don't know what to do. She's not that important to you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be right. carrying She's on. She's that important, little... Howard. I wouldn't be showing out the cash I'm showing right. out for the shrink <laughs> if I didn't give a shit about her. Isn't the shrink for you, not for her? 
I thought it was more for her, you know, but she wouldn't come, so it ended up being for me. <laughs> right. She Sa going. Sal, you're like she a drunk woman driving there. the wrong way down the Taconic. <laughs> she's the girl. I went to marriage uh, counseling with her, and she's the only girl after the first session when we left, she said, I could have bought a, a pair of jeans with that money. Yeah, because it's a waste of time being in uh... Well, there you go. So. <laughs> I mean, what, well, she's not going to change you. It's pretty impossible. What's going to change? What's going to change? Maybe you'll change in therapy a little bit. Uh, like you'll know enough not to whip out your cock if you want to get laid. Yeah, but you see, with my cock, I looked at it a little differently because I'm already on Howard TV. Yeah, but it's in front cock. of her friends. You're being a buffoon. Howard doesn't act like Howard at a party. Yeah, I know to behave. Milton Berle didn't go to parties in a dress. You always hear like people go, like, like people go, wow, Howard's so nice in real life. Yeah, because you know what? No one's paying me to be an asshole. He's being a phony in real life. Right. So I <laughs> phony it up. you got to learn. I'm like fucking sensitive when I'm off the air. I worry <laughs> about people. I fucking, I, I, I help the animals, everybody. You don't return then I get on the air and I'm a scumbag. He hates animals. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I eat animals. <laughs> yeah, he's saving birds. He eats birds. Right. Dude, you're the furthest thing from an animal lover. If I'm an animal, believe me. But do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when, when I'm out with my wife, I'm like sort of, in my own weird way, classy. You have to be appropriate, Sal. But Howard, I think the difference between you and Sal is I think Sal is just obsessed. I think Sal's he, not bright. He can't cut himself <laughs> off. I think he's he's got some problems. I don't think it's even that. I don't think he's that no, bright. I'll give you a perfect you example. Did you hear him on the wrap-up show yesterday? No. no. What did he say? He was like, the, like, remember he said that thing about the Jews? Yeah. And, and then, like, he was trying, then, then, like, he's trying to figure out how to, like, apologize for, not apologize, but just, like, explain Justify. Himself. Yeah, here, wait, I'll play a little clip. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's on Gary Page. I'm going to guess two, yeah. The, the Gary anti-Semitic yeah. page, too. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Hanging out with you Jewish people, I've learned a lot. I've learned that you're, <laughs> you're very, uh, very, you know, they're smart about how they handle things. I go, you, show, you do your drugs just like the minorities. You do your <laughs> racist material just like the minorities. You have a lot of hate and a lot of this and a lot of that. I go, but you guys really know how to carry on a nice, smiley, happy face in the public eye. But when you get in your backyard, hey, you might not be drinking uh, Ripple. You know, you drink a little Manischewitz or something else, and you might not be smoking a joint out of a cigar. You're smoking it out of a fancy bung, and you might be not might not be not might not be saying n-word jokes, but you're saying schwarze jokes. But you're doing it in a dignified way, wow. contained in a situation where it's cool. You can't get much stupider than that. Wow. Mm. Well, Howard, you know what? Come out the to Jericho and hang out at a few of these parties. Sal, exactly Sal, Sal. Like it is, Sal. When you say no, you're not telling it like it is. You see, the reason <laughs> you're not successful is because you're not telling it like it is. You're, you're doing a stereotype. You're saying the reason you all, it's it's like new that's people. So different Howard, from you. You sound so stupid. When I when I say the word you all or them or them people, I'm categorizing their race and religion. That's, just, that's, that, what, that's we what we know. That's, that's what a racist does. And, and, as, and as it turns out, Jews are lawbreakers. I'm eliminating confusion. Uh, all Jews smoke weed out right. of. Uh, they smoke out of bong. Out of no, bong. I'm not saying all of them. I'm saying the ones that I know have a tendency. All right. To okay. Just, that's so so that's what I'm saying. He's not. It's not that he. No, the thing is that look, he's stupid. Right. Yeah. yeah he, but he's stupid. But he's also got this obsession with being stupid all the time. But no, think, I, being I, stupid, being funny. How am I stupid by observing something and addressing it? I'm not stupid. You, by no, you, you you miss you miss it. You're missing the observation. I'm missing the fact that I shouldn't be saying the things that no, people know. No, no. You're not saying what other people think. Well, you're saying what you think. Are oh, you saying what Daniel Carver thinks? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, no, I'm not Daniel. I'm not a hateful person. You know, so comedians say what other people think. You're thinking things nobody's thinking. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're a trailblazer. No one can relate to you. You're like a Lewis and Clark of so comedy. I'm trying to say. You're in your own world. <laughs> A comedian is funny when you can relate to what they're saying. Right. It's hard wait, to relate wait, wait, wait. to you. I, who, was he, who was he talking for when he put the panties of that girl on his head or oh, sniffed them? come him? on. Stop Seriously. Please who are you thinking friend, about? bringing up old stories. I'm sorry. You're like a okay. white friend. Oh, but, but, but I have a question. Were you, were, were you drunk on that day? No, I wasn't. But who were you thinking of when you were fondling a gay guy at your bachelor party? I don't know. I was so drunk. He was you blind you drunk. just answered my question. But, but you're, you're, you're picking one thing that has nothing to do with the argument. Fred was in a blackout. <laughs> well, the, the point is that I was drinking, too, when I did these crazy things. <laughs> but you weren't, drinking, but when you you weren't drinking when you did the panties. You weren't no, drink I wasn't drinking. And you weren't drinking when you did the wrap-up show. 
wasn't. Were you? I thought it made perfect sense on the rapper. And you weren't drinking when you made the comments about where white girls shouldn't drink because uh, they then they have sex with black guys and have uh, mud-colored babies. A very good point. And you know what? If you drink, look what happens. I took out my cock and painted over face. Some girl woke up with a black kid coming out of a vagina. So oh my what does it tell God. you? Don't drink and do these things. Oh, my God. What? You know what? You'd be what? better off. He's you'd be amazing. better off getting. You'd be better off getting drunk and fondling a gay I'm guy. Not saying, well, Damn wait, right. Wait a minute. Hold on, guys. At I'm least not, I have my dignity. I'm not saying the fact that the baby was black is wrong. A black baby came out of a vagina. It's a specific detail that happened after the girl got drunk. But why is if it so bad? Chinese, <laughs> if, the, if she got shared by a Chinese person, I would say she got drunk and woke up with a Chinese. So why, why is it necessary to throw that detail in? Because right, it's Sal. specific. <laughs> Uh, Here's Sal. You guys can put a spin on anything. I, I love you and I appreciate everything you've done. Do what you want. Critique me, criticize it. It's all good. We don't have to. Get back to work. I, I don't know what else to tell you because no matter what I say. I, I think when he goes, I have to get back to work. It's <laughs> making phony phone calls in the other room with Richard. You know, I, could cure, other I could cure cancer for children and you guys would call me an asshole immediately. I no, I tell you what. You That's not going to happen. You, know? you cure that, cancer Sal. for children. I guarantee you I will not call you an asshole. <laughs> you know what? You, you cure like cancer for children. I don't know. I, Howard, I don't. No, I don't know where to go with anything. I'm sorry. Anyway, here's Sal from the rap. Yeah, but we show. don't have to spin I, I anything. I just want to know what Sal <laughs> just, has done that equates to curing cancer for I don't children. Know, but here's Sal on the wrap up show. <laughs> Sal, you seem like a nice father and stuff, but you are the absolute reason why so many women hate men, man. You just rep, you think you just, so? Yeah, dude. And you, and you find guys that are just as dumb as you, and you think it's okay, you know? Well, I don't want to find guys who are as dumb as me. I, I definitely <laughs> want to improve myself. But I don't know about women hating men. I think women who hate men who are loud and boisterous and obnoxious all the time. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, but I'm not that guy. Yeah, you are that guy. You're exactly that guy. No, I don't think so. You know, uh, under certain <laughs> circumstance, situations, like when I have a lot of t in me to drink, in that case, yeah, I'm, I am that person. But, you know, I'm not like, uh, there are guys like, you know, like those big muscle heads, those douchebags you see at gyms that just always have an attitude. Well, and have an the only I don't have an intimidating shape. demeanor. You know what I mean? There's a big difference. But that's the uh, only difference. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, Sal ran out. Wow. I don't know. He's, he's confused. You know, the, actually, I was trying to help the guy. I know, but he's so confused in right. his own mind. I I really don't think he understands anything that you're saying. You know what it reminds me of? This is a true story. No. I had a friend who, whose uncle was a, a moron, you know, and, and he, he used to get drunk at parties, and he actually said this sentence. He said, all I know is the Jews must have done something pretty bad to get Hitler that mad at them. <laughs> <laughs> And, and he, everyone was going, what? And he didn't know why people thought he was stupid. Yeah. And you know what? Like, Anytime some guy starts a sentence with all's I know. All's I know is. He's you know, that the all rest the time. is going to be worthless. All's I know is. <laughs> anyway, I, Sal ran out of that little microphone. He why? ran away from it, but I was in the middle of trying to tell him. I think he could, you know, do all right with his wife if he just kind of behaved around her. You think that'd bit. be enough, though? Uh, I, I, at this point. To start. At this point, it's a little rough. <laughs> Uh oh, Sal looks like he's about to cry. Sal, I know, get in I here. Know. I hate what well, he thinks. I don't like him. I like you. We all like you, Sal. No, we don't. don't and I Are you crying? No, I'm not crying at all. Are you but... about to cry? No, I just I got. You know what? That's why I have to step away a little earlier than I used to because I can't. It just gets to be too much. At, right, uh, let, me, let, let me talk. And to I'm you. taking what you're you're saying into consideration, and that's why I am doing these things. I am going to therapy. Sometimes uh, it can get like a gangbang in here. I was just trying to tell you, man to man. Without everybody jumping in. Your marriage is a disaster. Your wife's cute. She's hot. I'm trying to tell you what you need to do in order to patch things up with this broad. I mean, she's the mother of your kids. Mm -hmm. You can't go to a party with her and be the asshole. That's all I'm telling you. I know, but... I'm being real now. I know. I think you've been being real since day one, but I don't know... Tell me what you don't know. I don't I know how to fucking list. get there. I guess I really am that wacko that you've been saying I am. I don't know. Tell us what you do now. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a better oh, that, way to start. I do know you can lose a lot of weight jet skiing. <laughs> I know wow, Jews a, use bongs. That's, that's, a, that's what I know. Uh, that's a go-to for you. <laughs> I know. I love it. I just love it. Are you saying that you feel now that you, that you never thought you were nuts? Right. Now you're starting to realize you might be. Considering what happened at the party and considering how much I really do care and love my wife, why would I do these things? How to does it keep going horribly our... wrong? Right. right. Howard? Now, I have a theory why you keep doing these things. That's what I was trying to tell you. Right. 
You have you are so hungry for love and attention that you'll do anything, even at a party, to Why? stand out. Because you want to be special in the worst way. Even to the point where now you're special. Everyone's talking about you at the party. The party was your party. You know what? You couldn't stand that the focus was on this woman and it was her birthday and her special day. You couldn't stand being just part of the crowd. You so badly want to be seen. You remind me of a guy who sits at the movies and you sit there and you stare at the screen and go, you can't even enjoy the movie because you're like, I'm supposed to be up on that screen. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not to the extreme. Right. I'm, I'm really it's supposed not. To be my, you couldn't even let that woman have her birthday. I love that woman. I adore no, that woman. I you do. Love, you, you, want, you were jealous of her. Your no, envy I wasn't. came through. I really, I'm, I'm not an envious Sal, person. you got to get in touch I'm with not. this. You're I, so envious that the, the attention is going to another human being. I really am not. I got drunk off my ass, and I you know why you, you know why you hate. You got to look at the result. He's got to look at the result. He keeps arguing, but he won't look at the result. You know why you hate women so much? I'm going to tell you why. When right. a woman walks in the room, she gets all the attention just for being pretty. So you hate pretty women. You want to be the pretty woman. You want to be in a dress and fucking high heels and have everybody look at you. Yeah. And it's not happening. So I'm so glad I came out. in here. Right. That's what I'm telling you. Look at me. I'm I, trying to help you here. I don't want to be a pretty woman, dude. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> no, no chance of not that. Not literally, but you want to be the person who walks in the room and gets all the attention. Mm, I don't know about that. Yeah. But didn't How it I'm... happen, Sal? See, that's what I'm saying. You have to look at the result of your actions. Don't look at the, right. the, the ha- beginning of the action. <clears throat> look at the end point of the action. Now it's not Laura's party. It was the party Sal ruined. Right. You took away Laura's party. We all have that to a certain extent. Do you, do you understand that? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, what? You don't know? Uh, yeah, I get it, but um, I don't... I, 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 Didn't your father pay more attention to other women than he did to you? Yeah. So the pretty woman walks in the room. Where's your father's attention go to? The pretty woman. Not you. Your wife's emotional friend is on the phone. <laughs> I'm not wearing, dude. I don't want to be a part of this. Is that homo crying like a bitch? How's my favorite daughter? Squirt a few more tears, you homo. Huh? I'm not scoring any tears, you dick licking piece of shit. Drop dead, you cocksucker. I mean, that's the way she used to cry when I fucked her. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> that's Gary, you know. <laughs> Do you recognize it? Is it really? Yeah, it's Papa Boy. <laughs> hey, well, it's, a first, it, it's been 15 years and Gary finally pranked me. You're pretty good. When you're done in there, come back. I need you to throw some stuff out for me. <laughs> nice. Uh, Bill, Bill, you're on the air in Rome, New York. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, now, Howard. Two yeah. things. The first thing is you got to give Sal his own show, man. And not what already- for? I don't need my... I, the 15 minutes I get here, I feel like a pile... I slither out of this place every day. Can you imagine yeah, me I, for an hour and this guy breaking me down? I, I can't get enough of you, Sal. Thanks. Well, I, I think you're fantastic. All right, Sal. There you go. You have your fans. But it's I not that. See, guy. that's another thing with the therapy thing. It's not, I should hey, be Howard, looking for that. Thank you, Bill. Uh, th- th- the only Sal. acceptance I should be happy about is, is, do, is for myself doing a good job... Uh, and when and I, my wife and children. When your father wouldn't pay attention to you, how did you feel? You know, I, cu- I closed that out. I just closed it out. Right, let's hey, talk Howard? about it now. How did you feel when your father ignored you? It was horrible. It was one of the things that my therapist told uh, I'm working on right now with my therapist. So that how me. did it feel sitting at that party watching somebody else and no one was really noticing you? How did it feel? You know, I have to be honest with you. When I was at the party, I was there. It was a Do decent- you see the similarities psychologically? Um, my therapist. No one's paying attention to me. I can't get attention, so I'll act out any way I can. I'll whip my cock out, like a woman would whip her breast out and get your father's attention. I'll show my cock, and everyone will now be focused. Who can who can't st- stare at a train wreck when he was whipping out his cock and putting shit in his foreskin? Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And you're at the party. I get it when you hear you put it on at showbiz, but now you're at the party with your wife. Right. And she's just there as a, as a person. You're there. Maybe right. you couldn't even stand that Christine is so s- spectacular looking that she's starting to get more attention than you. Mm-hmm. And now you even took away her attention. Maybe she walked in and guys were looking at her and you couldn't stand it. You want the guys to look at you, too? I don't know. See, I got to hey, tell you, you when I'm at this I'm party, saying? it's not. Yeah, I do. But I'm not brewing at a party. I'm not envious. I'm just there. You, and You're not I'm in not, touch I'm, with your He's not aware of it. You're I'm not, not aware of it. Maybe I'm well, just next bored. Next time you go to but a I'm party. Not, no, you're not bored. You're uh, bored because no one's looking at you. Listen to me. Okay. The next time you go to a party, I want you to feel what's going on inside of you before you act out. And if I, I felt to, that way, I wouldn't be at the party. I won't go to the party. And I want I you to notice there. that okay. you're very, very getting a lot of anxiety <clears throat> because no one's staring at you. No one's looking. Everyone's paying attention to Christine and everyone's paying attention to the birthday. No one wants me. 
And then you realize how childish that is. And Even then, the drinking is to deal with the anxiety. Well, that's number one. You should stop the drinking. Yeah. It's a baby bottle. Right. He took the bottle and he cuddled with it. They should have put a blanket on him and put his thumb in his mouth. <laughs> Before or after the dress. <laughs> do, do you, I'm not literally saying you I want know to be a woman. Mean. I'm saying you want the attention a woman gets. I don't know what I want. I have a beautiful wife. I have three me. kids. I just I'm want my wife you to... You want. Uh, but you never you. grew up. Look at me. Yeah. Stop avoiding my gaze. I'm, uh, I'm looking at you, not like your father who looked away from you. Took the train wreck you are. And called you Tony. Right. <laughs> I'm looking at you. I'm telling you. Right. You got to start believing in yourself. And that you're not a little baby who needs attention from his daddy. You've got to be your own man now. You can go to a party and give the attention to other people. And what a relaxation and relief it is to go to a party and let other people have the attention. And you get to sit back and relax a little bit mm -hmm. and enjoy yourself. Isn't that tremendous pressure to have to be the buffoon all the time to get the attention? I guess. Don't yeah. you feel like that was a lot of pressure in that night? Uh, maybe, yeah. But look of at course. all the things that happened after. You know, all of right. this stuff that you have to go through. Yeah, but it's exciting. But don't you, so yeah, you keep so getting drawn back into the excitement? You want to be Misha Barton, right? Hey, Howard, I have one question for Sal. When you said your father ignored you, did he pay attention to you when you when you misbehaved? Yeah, well, hey, that's that. That's what he does. He really oh, goes he to that de facto negative. shit. So when I prank call my religious te religion teacher, that you really beat the living shit so out of. So now him. your wife <laughs> is turned into your father, who has to beat you up psychologically, and is used to that kind of love. Right. You or like? And you think that's love? love. Mm. Interesting. See what I see, my goateed friend? Yes, yeah. I, I see a little bit of it. Thank you, Mike. Go ahead in Buffalo. You're on the air. Hey, Howard. Is Sal, is Sal still in there? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. No. He's gone. Yeah, yeah. So how have you not gotten a shit beat out of you every time you go to a party? You know, that's a great question, and I, I actually ask myself that a lot. It's amazing. I have, I, I don't know, I think I have an ability to, uh, uh, so, in some odd way. Where there's pussies? Or, 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 no, you know what it is? <laughs> I might be a little crazy and stuff, but people also there's another side of me as well. I think I'm a nice guy, and people <laughs> you are. You, that's and people, the I get a, Sal. I, I get along with people really that's well. The but grown then up in Sal, the only thing that prevented that um, Sal, means, I'm asking you to look at the Sal who's not so grown up, the baby who gets into the room and feels envious that everyone else is getting attention. And then, you know what? There's no shame in admitting it lives inside of you. Yeah, but it is it's Sal? real dicky. Uh, that's, that's how, a, how did, the there you are, you whining his wife, a poodle. What? Okay, that guy happens to be a great guy. We were actually conversing for about a good 45 minutes. What guy? I uh, could talk, if I'd have known you my whole life, if you'd have said that to my wife, it had been your last day on the planet. If you'd right. have put my daughter's panties on your head, if I was mutt, it had been over with. What, oh, oh. Because, you know what, we do, if you know somebody real well and they do a few <laughs> kooky things and they've got a screw loose I don't know, two, you draw cum on a guy's wife's face, uh, you could get your ass kicked. That's yeah, I mean, how did I did get my, I only got my ass kicked one time. I Who kicked your ass? Some black dude. I was drunk, I was leaving a bar, mm -hmm. and he was rapping in the middle of a parking lot, and I was... Back in my G-Man days, I started rapping to him. Yeah. You challenged him to a rap-off? Yeah. G-Man. Yeah. Big G -Man. mistake. G-Man challenged a black guy to a rap-off. Yeah. Go ahead. What happened? He was trying to get street cred. Yeah. Well, this guy was huge. I mean, this guy, as soon as he walked in the room, I remember at the club, so, I recall. So, Sal saw too many movies where, like, black people, instead of fighting, worked out stuff through rapping. Right. 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 Yeah. Or dancing. <laughs> right, right. I thought it was like West Side Story. Like Eminem's movie where he gets up on stage and he disses the guy through rapping right. and then everything's cool. Here's me and my fantasy. Right. I guess this is the fantasy right. land that you refer so you, to. So, so very so, realistic. So you saw a black guy rapping in a parking lot where most of us would just keep walking fast. Right. And you well, stopped to rap against him. When I Before right. I started drinking, when he walked into the club, I saw him from across the way. I said, whoa, that's one guy I'm going to definitely stay away from. There's a black guy. Right. You know, and uh, this guy was built like a shit brick house. Yeah. And uh, I stayed away from him. A, a brick, a brick shit, shit house. house. <laughs> All right, go ahead. See, that's why you won't beat me up, sir. I just made you laugh. Go ahead. So anyway, we get outside. Not and on I'm, purpose. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm... Drunk off my ass, and he's sitting on the hood of a car with a couple of the brothers there, and he starts rapping, and I walk past him with my buddy, Chris the Cop at the time. And you knew you were better at rapping than him, I guess. It was yeah, because I was G-Man at the time. I had my right. hip-hop stuff, right. and I was convinced gonna I was going to prove that a white guy can rap better than a black guy. Go ahead. No, it wasn't right in black. It was just oh. talent. Right, so ahead. anyway, um, 
Uh, I go up to him. The guy goes, I'll never forget. He's like, yo, Lester, give me the keys to the car. And he's like, no, man, you can't drive. And he's like, I ain't driving, motherfucker. I just want to listen to the radio so I can do some of my hip-hop shit. So I heard that, and I said, oh, you want to listen to the radio for some hip-hop? And I started rapping immediately. Right. Bop, 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 bop. What did you do? Do you remember the rap? Mm. Uh, no, I don't remember the rap. Then uh, Please try to remember. Did the N-word come out at any no. point? No, no, did well, not. Let me hear the rap. I don't remember do it, but your raps. I'll tell you what happened was... Uh, <laughs> Please, I'm begging you. Do Please one of your do a rap. rap. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I can't do it. It's so awful. Go ahead, do it. Already helped me. No, just do it. <laughs> I don't know what to do, pal. I was like, you know, people listen. I'm not dissing, pushing at the party, and you're wishing. And then... He jumped in with well, his like. He doesn't help you rap. You don't need Artie's help for and that. He, and, he, <laughs> and he jumped and he jumped in and started rapping. And he's like, yeah. Him. So my friend said, "What the fuck?" Again, Sal, what is Sal doing? Mm. And he stepped into my face and he started rapping. Right. So he was rapping. Right. So here's where it got crazy. He starts rapping in my face and then I start rapping even louder in his face and it's like a rap battle, like something you would see in Beat Street. And. <laughs> I kept going, I kept going, I kept going, and all of a sudden, I I outbattled him in the in the hip hop battle here. The he rap. Been I awful. won the rap battle. Nice. I swear on my children, I won. Okay, fine. So he steps back, and all the brothers around him go, "Oh shit, white boy took out motherfucker, you got fucking played." You know, and they they said the they said the n word in a, you know in terms of endearment what to each other. What did they say? Yo, nigga, that, you know don't get, that, that cracker just took you out, nigga. He took you down, motherfucker. This this. Yeah. It was like, this white boy can fucking rap, man. And, and, and the black guy was upset, but not that upset. He just right. he shook his head, and here's what happened. I had this rhyme where I said, I, he, he, he turns his head, he's, he, he buries his head in his hands, and I'm standing there, and I feel glorified, like the lights right. are shining down from heaven. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I can't believe this. This is, my, this is it. This is my, I made it. It's all downhill from here. Well, mm. then I have to cross the line. So I, I said to him, all I said was, as he's turning around, I said, yo, your mother's so old, she looks like a prune. <laughs> and I don't even know what that means exactly, but I had that in one of my rap well, songs. Well, prunes are black. Right. I go, no. your mother's so old, she looks like a prune. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, lights out. Right. He went, he cocked his arm back and... Boom! He hit me right in the face, and I was leveled out on the ground. <laughs> I guess Are he you won. Sure? I, I, he wins. Are you sure you didn't say coon? No, I didn't say coon, but it could have rhymed with prune. Maybe the next line, he might have said, uh, he would have stabbed me. But I was down on the ground, and I get up, and I spit. Uh, it looked like tomato sauce coming out of my mouth. I mean, right. down my shirt right. and everything. And he just looks at me. He goes, don't you talk about my mother. She raised me for nine months. <laughs> and he oh, <laughs> and I'll never forget it and he walked away it's one and, of the best stories I've ever heard and then all those no all those guys are there and they're looking at me and I just with my buddies walked away and I got in the car and that was it and, was and my tooth off, yeah. was uh, dead the nerve in, the, in my tooth was sure, dead you gotta, you it turned black and all that other horse shit right. but, uh, all right, well. there's the irony you turned black my tooth did yeah all right Sal, listen, I was just trying to help you with what went down with your wife. I'm hoping that you'll have sex at some point with her because she's a beautiful young woman and she yeah. has needs. Lord knows, I don't want to turn into anyone else for those needs. Howard, uh, can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you ever worry that he's going to do something that will do irreparable damage to the show? Yes. Do you? <laughs> no, nah, oh. I don't really worry about it, no. Because, I, I mean, the stuff that comes out of his mouth is just... Unfucking believable. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I don't well, know. I you don't... know, the two of them. And, and, and Sal, Sal, you are stupid, by the way. It, th there's no way anybody can make the comments you do and, and have any intelligence at all. Right. Uh, okay. All right. Well, that's, you see, to but me. But I was just going to say, Rigid and Sal, we sort of keep them contained in here. You know, that's where they can't get into trouble. I think that's a good defense now. You should just say you're stupid. You can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It works. It works. Uh, yeah. for and people. you tell your wife you're stupid. I mean, just say, right. listen, honey, I'm not a bright guy. You married an imbecile. <laughs> that might not get him laid either. I know. Yeah, I women know. never want to fuck a dumb guy. Well, wait, wait. There was a movie where Mel Gibson played a retarded guy, and he got fucked. Well, uh, he's so. Mel Gibson, and he looked like Mel Gibson right. at Joe, that time. Joe, you're on the air in Raleigh. What's, hey. what's on your mind? In a year and a half, this guy's going to be homeless. Sal, That's true. What do you? Yeah. What are your plans? Let's say I leave the radio, because I, I worry about everyone here. Right. Uh, would you have any kind of game plan? Bartending. Seriously? No, I don't know. I don't know what. What am I going to do? I don't know. 
somebody's going to hear this show and they're going to say <laughs> they're going <laughs> to laugh at the prospect of him coming to work for him. No. You know, Sal and Richard have such a great job. If you ask me. Uh, they come to work every day. They have their own studio. With their, it's called the Sal and Richard Room. It even has we a call it the Room of Doom. Yeah. yeah, and they have their own equipment in there. And I ask them to go in there and just create, do whatever you guys want to do, and come out with some cool stuff. And it is kind of a cool job. And it's and, the greatest uh, job in the world. Yeah. So I'm thinking. I don't know. I, don't know. You know, I, I worry about you, but uh, maybe I, you know, see, this is why I feel I have to stay in the business. No, you don't have to stay in the business for me. I've always yeah. gotten by. I mean, whether it was Wall Street, whatever I did, I, I was successful at. Pizza. So. Pizza? Yeah, I can make pizza again. Maybe me and Scott DePace will open up a pizzeria or something. You can't worry about everybody, Howard. Yeah, yeah I know. You gotta let I worry go. about him, though. Well, I mean, you're gonna start, <laughs> you know, I mean if you think about it, you're going to start worrying about everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know. Nah, you don't have to worry about me. I'm okay. I'll, I'll get by. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm right. worried about everyone but Sal. Thank you, Sal. I don't and, know. Uh, I wish you the best. <clears throat> I don't know that we're going to be able to tackle this all in one session. I don't think we all will. All right. Thank you. Sal, buddy. Good. Are you going to heed their advice this time? Yeah, please. No, but do you see what they're starting to say about, you know, your addiction to attention or maybe... Look at the business we're in. Isn't it like a, 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 an attention-addictive business that we're in? You know? Got a great prank. <laughs> but you know what they're saying, that you have to show some restraint when you're in regular society. Even Howard says he turns it off, you know, every now and again. Yeah. When he's at a party or it's a situation where you have to behave more appropriately. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I just have to shut off that little portion of my life. You know, I have to eliminate it. Have you ever been in a situation where you got, like, shit drunk and, like, acted ridiculous? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But are you starting to see it's kind of like it's become a cycle with you? You know, you, you even mentioned it in there. You took uh, you took four steps forward with your wife, but then took ten steps back when you drew uh, semen on somebody. Yeah. That's so, the one thing I have to learn to... It's the one thing I have to learn to eliminate. I have to, I have to, I have to uh, stop, you know, I, I have to stop doing things like that. You know, you can't go to parties and draw semen on people's faces and whip your penis out. You know, you're just not going to get along with somebody who's normal and wants to raise a family. But in your mind, do you really think there is anything wrong with that? Because you always seem to think that, you know, your comedy is it's, it's, it's meant as a joke, as a prank. It's not serious. Yeah. Right, it is. That's in my mind. But afterwards, when the smoke clears, how can you not... How can you justify what I did as a joke? It's beyond, you know, it's beyond a joke, right? <laughs> so you're, you're kind of disgusted with yourself right yeah, now. a little bit, yeah. Now, you also referred to your G-Man days. Yeah. Do you think maybe you could wrap something to your wife or get her, get it going and uh, no. maybe get get her back in the sack? There's a beautiful lady to my right. If I rap right now, I'd be even douchier in her eyes if that's possible. I cannot <laughs> rap right now. All right, G-Man. I'm sorry. Well, best of luck, G-Man. Okay, thanks, buddy. I know it's late in the show, and I know it's more visual, but I just you need to see this. So, you know, Sal drew a load on that woman's face, the picture. Yeah. So the guy sent us a picture. Sal's really more evil than I thought. You have to see this. Let me see the load. Well, it's all over. It's on the top. It's on the bottom. Oh, he's so angry. And then if you see, it, Howard, look, on the bottom it says every man's load, in case you didn't know what it was. And then oh, it's all over God. her forehead. Wow. And what does that say up top on top of her forehead? Guess what? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's load. He, look how angry he is. Like, <laughs> man. Look how angry. Where was that picture? Was that it, was on, it was on a big poster board. And it was on display? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. You God. can see where everybody signed it. Like, we love you. Happy that 40th birthday. he doesn't birthday. know why his wife is You know what? That him. looks like the kind of picture you'd find in the guy's apartment who went and shot up all those women in the health club. Yeah, and it's got the middle finger out... Uh, it's pointing at the drips from the load, <laughs> and it's a nice. The, the woman's very pretty. That yeah, is the most inappropriate, rude thing I've ever seen in my <laughs> yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think, don't know why his wife wouldn't be proud of him for right. that. <laughs> like that nuts. Yeah, she was. Wasn't uh, that a Kennedy? Uh, she was a Kennedy's sister. A lovely remembrance. I like to draw cum stains on a corpse. See, yeah. everybody's fucked up. Look at Kennedy Howard. He was shagging Marilyn Monroe behind everybody's back. Everybody's got their own little things. I'm the only idiot that brings this to the forefront. That's the only difference. But he was showing his dick at the right time. The yeah. forefront. To Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> I, no one would fault you for doing that. Yeah, that, that was actually a normal yeah. thing. He was yeah. coming on his secretaries. That was okay. And Marilyn Monroe. Well, Sal. Uh... I, look, I love my wife dearly, and I, I, want, I, I question it every day. I say, you know, is she quiet because she's just indifferent to me and I'm providing for the family? Or does she see a different side of me and really love me? Yeah, that's... but you're not providing for the family, though. That's a... Yeah, I am. What do you love about her? Everything. I think she's a great mom. She's a great person. She put up with a lot of my bullshit. And when's um, the last time you had sex with her? 
Did you have sex with her the entire week off? No. Not at all. When did the party happen? At the beginning yeah. of the vacation? Yeah, the party happened on the beginning of the vacation, and then uh, at the end of the vacation uh, on the Saturday night, I said, come on, now it's time for you to have fun. <laughs> I put it on her. Uh, that's when she said, get lost. And that, <laughs> that said a lot because here we are getting along, or at least I thought so, and then all of a sudden, get lost to me sounds like a lot of pent-up anger and frustration. You well, think? Yeah, I that's mean, right. How, how would you feel... And I know this could never happen, but how would you feel out of all of a sudden Beth turns to you and Ben and says, Sal, Get it lost. wasn't all but of Sal, a sudden. That's a heavy Sal, statement. you're retarded. No, I'm not. You sound retarded. You go into a party with your wife. You whip out your asshole. You whip out your cock. You play Guess What's in My Pouch in front of your wife. You draw cum stains on the birthday girl's picture. You, you do all this stuff. Woman. So then she's so fuming mad that you don't even pick up the signals. The reason she's not, you think she's not talking to you because she, she didn't care about any of that stuff. She's not right. talking to you because she thinks you're a fucking retard. And then on Saturday night, you ask her for sex and she says, get lost. And you thought you were getting along with her all week. Get lost is getting over easy mm -hmm. in that, in that yeah. situation. I don't know. I, that's, that's, that's what I need to work on. That's why I'm going to therapy. Huh? Yeah, but the point is you miss every <laughs> signal. <laughs> Uh, you know, looking, some you hit, some you miss. What can I tell you? No, you don't care. No, I do. I do. I so I dearly care. I just don't know what to do. She's not that important to you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be right. carrying She's on. She's that with important, Howard. I wouldn't be shelling out the cash I'm shelling right. out for the shrink <laughs> if I didn't give a shit about her. Isn't the shrink for you, not for her? I thought it was more for her, you know, and I, I saw a different side of her. So. I made her realize mm. what uh, she felt about you. No, you made Sal realize. You made me realize, realize yeah. Made she, you realize. She, she didn't she get won't, it. Yeah, she won't address these things to me for some reason. Why? <laughs> I guess she gave up. Mm. I, you know, I, when, when, when she wasn't angry... But do you notice a pattern that, like, everything you do is you ends up at, like, like huge apologies, mm. sending people flowers and... Uh, look at this. This is days yeah. after the party. He's still dealing with the repercussions. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Day by day. <laughs> day by day. Day by day. Day by day. No, but do you ever, do you ever get embarrassed? Like, just sort of how you're... Dude, I'm beyond embarrassment. I mean, I've, I've sold my soul to the devil. What are you right. talking about? I, I can't even... It's beyond embarrassment. I mean, what do you mean you sold your soul to I the mean, devil? I mean, I have no dignity left. You know, I mean, what do I have? But but if you want dignity, why would you, like, start drawing cum stains on, on the woman's picture and then whipping your cock out? And, like, leaving it hanging out and, you know, pissing into the fucking... Yeah, doesn't it sound like you gave away your dignity? Yeah. Nobody took it I mean, from you. you Did he ever have it? You, you, when you say you made a deal with the devil, again, it implies to me that no, you're so starved for attention that you've decided to just throw away all of your dignity just to get this attention. I guess I... I don't know. I mean, I don't like to look at myself that way, but... Um, what that's do you mean you made a deal with the devil? What did you mean I by mean, that? I mean, I mean... Uh, no, you know, you said something. What do you mean by it? Yeah. I don't know. I just I decided to cross through that threshold of humility and uh, just do whatever I do. The threshold of humility. Yeah, yeah, I broke through that. But what's the deal with the devil? What is the devil giving you in return? In other words, yeah. when you make a deal with the devil, yeah, it sounds to me like you got like the when Robert the Johnson deal. gave his soul to the devil. Supposedly, he, he gained rockstar. the ability to become a, an incredible blues player. <laughs> what did you what did become? You get? What did you get? Captain Sack. Now, what did you want? What, what would you say? You made a deal with the devil. What is the it's deal? It's not really a deal with. The, you know, I I, prop, I, uh, I think I improperly uh, put that w phrase together. I, I I don't know. It's like the. No, I think you you meant what you of, said. You made a deal of, with the devil. Okay, in my head, it's the wages of doing what you do. Uh, for entertainment, I mean. So am I the devil? Like, in other words, no, you're uh, the greatest thing that ever happened to me. But I it mean, sounds like I'm the devil. In other words, you made a deal with the devil. In order to get on the Howard Stern show, you had to be crazy. In my head, yes. Yeah, not, so I'm the devil. No, you're not the devil. You're the guy that I. I but isn't like. that devilish? Like, I, like you made a deal with me to come on this show, and, and in order to be on the show, you have to be wild and crazy. No, I think I think you are the symbol. And now you're famous. I think you're the symbol of the greatest achievement in my life, working for somebody who is the greatest entertainer ever, and being a part of that is really gratifying. So what's the deal with mm -hmm. the devil? The deal with the devil in my own head is yes. In my own head, I feel like I had to do these crazy, insane things to please But even at a party. What? You have to please me even, even when at you're at a, at a private party. No, I don't think that's the case. I don't know what I did at a party, Howard. I, I just think I have some issues. But, but, that... No, you whipped out your cock. You drew cum stains on a woman's you put face. put coins in it. You put coins in your cock. But it's like you weren't even on the show. I get it if you're on the show. You're right. trying to be funny. Were you doing it for me at the party? Hoping you'd hear about it? No, actually, I didn't even want to dis discuss it at the uh, on the show yesterday. I told Richard about it, and I knew yeah, that. Yeah, that's my point. So, so why why are you doing it at a party? 
I, that has nothing to do with making a deal with the devil. I know. I don't. I don't know, Howard. There's a lot of things that I uh, I question myself about. But it is, you know, it is what it is. What can I do? I'm I'm trying the best that I can. Uh, I, I, I love when Sal explains himself because yeah, it's so it, great. It sounds crazy. I don't yeah. Know, what's it, I don't, what, but you were kind of bragging about it on Lotus Notes when you sent me that picture of your ass I when you it was funny, when right? you mooned. Your wife was kissing the birthday boy, and then you just pulled your pants down and showed your asshole. No chick digs that. I mean, your wife. I mean, you're trying to patch your marriage up together. Like Lisa, would you could you be married to a guy who always is the guy who moons and whips his cock out at parties? I'll be I'll be honest. No. No. But his Dude. friend Laura loves Sal. Yeah, but yeah, but his wife doesn't. Right. And, yeah, and like Laura Beth said love to me, him if she was married, I was telling Beth about it. She goes, I, she goes, I don't know if I could be married to a guy. She goes, who just like whips his cock out and is always drawing cum. St- He's always the guy who does that. You know, I'm not always the guy that does that, but I, I did have a, uh, have a lot to drink that night, so. You know, I never thought I'd say this sentence, but Sal, you're not making any sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> Must be all that jet skiing already, all that weight you're losing from those jet skis. It's, like, it's causing you to... Keep it up, you wow. bastard. Keep, up your memory. keep pushing that jet ski button, pal. <laughs> you keep pushing it. You're looking great. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you're not Sal, seeing Lisa's 30 Ds. Sal, I don't want to... Sal, I don't want to ruin your on-air persona, but I know you're a big Eunice Shriver fan. She died 29 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah was that a Kennedy broad or something? Yeah. Lisa G is here. She's got a little rundown for us from Howard 100 News. Come on in, Lisa, and say hi to everyone. Lisa, Lisa. Ever since uh, she got her new bra, she's dressing more provocatively. I just want to point that out to my radio audience. This is a new top? New top, showing more cleavage, showing... Uh, it's a new me. Showing your new assets. Good for you. What do you got for us? All right, the woman whose 40th birthday party Sal almost single-handedly destroyed is speaking out to Howard 100 News. Right. At Laura's party, Sal exposed his penis, ruined her birthday poster, and insulted her sister-in-law. He drew cum on her face. <laughs> she says, quote, it was very unexplainable behavior. Who thinks of this stuff? He's a 40-year-old man in an 8-year-old body. Believe it or not, I was actually curious to see what was in his pouch. I had never seen an uncircumcised <laughs> penis before. And it was pretty scary. What was in his pouch? Nothing, what, but she he... just wanted to see it. Oh, a small he, cock. Because he claims when he was drunk he was playing what's in my pouch in the back of a car. Right. I don't know so yeah. nice. what he put in this time. All I know is I was talking to Ralph yesterday, and, and he said I called um, Sal after uh, the show and said, the next time you go to a party, can I go? I really want to see some of these <laughs> things. Yeah, it'd be fun to watch. It'd be fun to watch a guy self-destruct, yeah. I, uh, put, I, I put coins in it. Oh, Coins really? in your pouch? Yeah. Has your wife spoken to... Like, how was your whole vacation? I mean, was it just horrible? I don't know. It is what it is, man. It's like being in traffic. You know, you just got to deal with it. Wow. That's nice. How was... Um, has she said anything to you about your behavior at this party? Well, I went back to uh, Laura's house last night and uh, to apologize <laughs> and follow up. See, she, she was... She's actually... Because she's such a big fan of you, of yours... Um, she was delighted that at least her birthday's being recognized. So I went over there, and she was happy about that. She wasn't pleased what I did to the party. But your segment came on the radio, and uh, Christine listened to it. And uh, when you said to me, you know what, dude, you don't take your dick out at a party in front of your wife. You, you can't expect her to actually like you and love you for that. And I think subconsciously my wife just started saying yes to herself. I noticed her doing that. Right. And she never expresses that stuff to me. But you almost acted as her therapist yesterday. She wouldn't come, so it ended up being for me. Right. <laughs> Sal, going. Sal, you're she like a drunk woman, woman driving there. the wrong way down the Taconic. <laughs> she's the girl. I went to marriage uh, counseling with her, and she's the only girl after the first session when we left. She said, I could have bought a, a pair of jeans with that money. Yeah, because it's a waste of time being in that. Uh... Well, there you go. So. I mean, what, well, she's not going to change you. It's pretty impossible. What's going to change? What's going to change? Maybe you'll change in therapy a little bit. Uh, like you'll know enough not to whip out your cock if you want to get laid. Yeah, but you see, with my cock, I looked at it a little differently because I'm already on Howard TV. Yeah, but it's in front cock. of her friends. You're being a buffoon. Howard doesn't act like Howard at a party. Yeah, I know to behave. Milton Berle didn't go to parties in a dress. <laughs> you always hear like people go, like, like people go, wow, Howard's so nice in real life. Yeah, because you know what? No one's paying me to be an asshole. He's being a phony in real life. Right. So I <laughs> phony it up. you got to learn. 
turn. I'm like fucking sensitive when I'm off the air. I worry <laughs> about people. I fucking I, I, I help the animals, everybody. You don't return then I get on the air and I'm a scumbag. He hates animals. <laughs> right. <laughs> I eat animals. <laughs> yeah, he's saving birds. He eats birds. Right. Dude, you're the furthest thing from an animal lover. If I'm an animal, believe me. This is, but do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when, when I'm out with my wife, I'm like sort of, in my own weird way, classy. You have to be appropriate, Sal. But Howard, I think the difference between you and Sal is I think Sal is just obsessed. I think Sal's he, not bright. He can't cut himself <laughs> off. I think he's he's got some problems. I don't think it's even that. I don't think he's that no, bright. I mean, I'll give you a perfect did you hear example. Him on the wrap up show yesterday. No. no, what did he say? He was like the like. Remember he said that thing about the Jews. Yeah. And, and then like he was trying. Then, then like he's trying to figure out how to like apologize for not apologize but just like explain Justify. Himself. Yeah. Here, wait. I'll play a little clip. Let me see if I can find that. I think it's on Gary Page. I'm going to guess two, yeah. The, the Gary anti-Semitic yeah. page, too. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Hanging out with you Jewish people, I've learned a lot. I've learned that you, <laughs> you're very, uh, very, you know, they're smart about how they handle things. I go, you, show, you do your drugs just like the minorities. You do your racist material just like the minorities. You have a lot of hate and a lot of this and a lot of that. I go, but you guys really know how to carry on a nice, smiley, happy face in the public eye. But when you get in your backyard, hey, you might not be drinking uh, Ripple. You know, you drink a little Manischewitz or something else, and you might not be smoking your joint out of a cigar.